The world is kind of a scary place right now. You have the economy tanking, inflation rising. It seems like there's a new COVID scare every other week, right? It almost seems like the world is on fire and God has abandoned us. And a lot of people might think, okay, well, where, how, where did this start? Why are things so bad now? It must be because of the coronavirus that started, you know, two years ago. That's, that's where it started, this decline in humanity. See, I have another theory. See, within the past few years, another thing has been invented, which I think is actually more responsible for the downfall of humanity than any of the other, other aforementioned things. And that thing is TikTok. I think TikTok is quite possibly the last test that God gave us to see like, oh, do I want to completely abandon humanity or do I think it should still be saved? Is there still something left here? And so as a test, TikTok was invented and well, we massively failed because it's, I'm pretty sure that's like the most popular social media app now. If you want to see what is wrong with human beings, humanity nowadays, look no further than TikTok. But hey, if you consider yourself one of the many who genuinely enjoy TikTok, fine, that's on you. It's not, <laughs> it's not something that I personally enjoy, but whatever. Uh, I will say though, I really admire people who find gold clips on TikTok because I just, I can't bring myself to do it uh, for me to react to. So shout out today to 21 Studios who has uh, compiled a bunch of different TikToks, um, some of the best and some of the cringiest ones in terms of, you know, Manosphere related topics. So we're going to be going over one of his videos today, part one of top 21 TikTok MGTOW truths. Uh, why men stopped dating. Okay, here we go. If I don't make it out alive, tell my wife that I love her. I'm gonna stop this thing. Tell my wife I love her. Okay. I don't cook, I don't clean, but let me tell you how I got this ring. You were nice until he married you and then you showed him your true colors. Okay, first of all, Obviously that stage is not real. Um, why would you bring your kid into that? Right? Imagine what kind of imagine a scenario that went down there. Uh, hey little uh, Lily, whatever the daughter's name is. Do you want to film a TikTok about me talking about how I'm a bad mom and a bad wife? Like what was going through her mind doing that? <laughs> it's insane. Like obviously that is stage, but I'm more curious about what was going on behind the scenes for her to think, oh, let me get my daughter involved in this. Her daughter probably has no idea what she's even saying there. I mean, the, the, people, the, the things people will do for attention on the internet nowadays, just for their five seconds of fame by saying something ridiculous like that. You know, Child Protective Services should come over to her house, confiscate her kid, and dude, if you just give her kid to some random person, right? They're, she's probably better off than just being actually with, with her as her mom. You know, some women get pissed off that I do men's rights videos, but let me f***ing tell you why. I'm not gonna say who this person is, um, but someone very, very, very close to me, his wife just told him last night that she was leaving him. Now this guy is the best guy. He would give the shirt off his back to anyone. He's always been the primary parent to their daughter so that she could do whatever she wanted to do. He gave her the absolute world. Whereas they've been together for nine years and his family knows nothing about this woman. It's the most one-sided relationship I've ever seen in my life. And now she's leaving with absolutely no explanation other than to gaslight him into thinking that he didn't do enough. When in reality, she used him to build her confidence back up and then left. I saw him yesterday and I didn't know that person. He's so broken. And that is why I fight for men's rights. Tell me that men aren't abused. See, this is where uh, the MGTOWs and the MRAs really have a good point, okay? Let's be honest, guys get screwed over in situations like these all the time. The thing that I want to talk about is more so, again, that's not really my lane because I'm a single guy, uh, haven't been married, don't have kids, so like I'm not gonna talk too much about that. You wanna see about issues like that or talk about issues like that, go to like someone like Better Bachelor, for example. Um, but unfortunately, a lot of guys come into this space after things like that happen. So they come in for copium to try to feel better, which is okay. Look, if you have a major accident, a physical accident, you go to a hospital, they give you opioids to feel better, to relieve pain. That's actually a good thing, you're feeling better. But if you keep taking that copium forever, it can start to, the, the thing that actually helped to 
make you uh, not in pain anymore starts to actually poison you. All right. So a lot of guys come into this space because of experiences like this lady was just talking about here. And look, man, I have love for you, brother, if you're going through that. But, you know, if you are still talking and, uh, and, and having issues with something that happened in your past, like a few years down the line, there's a time and a place where you have to start to get over it. You feel me? It's kind of like, uh, let's say, for example, you were in the Super Bowl and then uh, it was your one shot to finally get a Super Bowl title and you're, you know, some NFL player or whatever, right? Obviously. And uh, there is a bad call. And because of the bad call, you never got your Super Bowl ring. All right. If you're just and you get screwed over, you have every right in the world to complain about the refs, to be like, this is rigged, this is unfair, whatever. But if you're still complaining about it five years down the line, instead of actually within those five years going to try to win another Super Bowl, I still have sympathy for you of you getting screwed over that one time, but it's kind of like, dude, come on. At some point, you have to start taking control of your life. You feel me? So MGTOW is great for, and, and watching MGTOW content is great for when those things initially happen to you, when you have like your red pill moment. Um, but don't get lost in the rabbit hole. Make sure you can come back up. When I like someone, I put them in the friend zone. When I don't like someone, I still put them in the friend zone. When I meet anyone, I put them in the friend zone. It doesn't matter who, they're all going in the friend zone. Yeah, that's not true. That's, that's cap right there. <laughs> All right, the same girls that say that type of shit are the same girls being like, I don't need no man, <laughs> you know, like, okay, the fact that you're bringing it up means that you do need a man, because it's all, it's, if, it, if you didn't need no man, you wouldn't even talk about it because it wouldn't be on your mind. So it's the same thing with the friend zone. These girls get an ego boost from get, putting guys in the friend zone. Um, so they like to say, oh, I, I always put guys in the friend zone. But all it takes is for one giga chad that they've, you know, they've always fantasized about to walk into the room and then all of a sudden their minds change, right? Um, again, look, you have to think about this, like why would people post things like this? <laughs> so last night my best friend hit 40 people for her butt count, so I decided to go buy a cookie cake and I'm gonna write a cute little message. So this is the final product. It was honestly really difficult. I used this uh, cake frosting, but I didn't have scissors, so I had to bite the tip. That's why it kind of looks bad. Today's a big day, huh? 40 days. 40 days. Let's go. How does it feel to have 40? Here's the 50. So here's. You know, it's funny too. How much you want to bet that it's probably more than 40? <laughs> you know, the whole thing of like women, uh, whatever a woman tells you, like divide by three or something, or woman, whatever a guy tells you, multiply by three. I don't know the exact numbers. Um, but yeah, more than likely, it's, it's probably actually a bit higher. Now, I'm not sitting here judging. Like for me, look, in terms of like wifing up a girl, I honestly don't want her body count to be too high, but Look, if you want to go out there, have fun. As long as you're being safe, that's fine. But also, if you get all mad that a guy that you like doesn't respect you because you've been with a lot of dudes, don't be surprised. That's just the way it is, okay? The way guys operate, they want things that are rare. The best way I've heard it put is guys want to have a freak, but a girl that's only a freak for him. You know what I mean? Now you can say, oh, well, it's because you're, it's because you're, it's because you're insecure. You are just insecure in your masculinity and she's just going out there expressing herself and being a free spirit. You are afraid of assertive free spirit femininity. It's like, it's like, nah, man, I, I just don't, I don't want a girlfriend that's just been with a bunch of dudes. Like, I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> look again, you do you, but for me, it's not the type of girl that I want to date. That's not the type of girl that most dudes want to date. Just being honest, right? You can be honest with your feelings. I don't have to try to logic my way as to why. I've, I guess I've been naturally selected to have that proclivity, all right? And most dudes have as well. Um, but yeah. Someone who wants to make America great again and supports building the wall. No, that's a dumb Trumpster. I'm a cum dumpster. What's your name? 
you want to No. This is my car. No. You said you had a boyfriend, remember? Yeah, but you just hang out as friends. You're a bone digger. Yeah. Man, that is so staged. I'm sure things like that kind of happen every once in a while, but you know, like if you guys are no old YouTube, Vitaly TV used to uh, do pranks like this and they've been exposed as fake. I don't usually ask twice, but you sure you don't want to go out with me? Your car? Yeah, that's my car. That is totally fake. I mean, what kind of acting is that? <laughs> I have a boyfriend. We can just hang out as friends. No, you are a gold digger. No, I'm not a gold digger. Dude, that's not how people talk in real life, all right? It's just a bunch of cringy teenagers just acting to try to get, get views on TikTok, all right? Because this type of stuff, this thing of like, haha, he got her, gold digger exposed. A lot of people like to watch that type of stuff, all right? Hi, Dana. I just moved in next door. I'm a supermodel. I don't care who the IRS sends. I am not paying taxes. <laughs> I think that's a relatable thing for a lot of people. It's like, you know, because they'll get this whole blue pilled idea of the one, right? Most people use it as a cope to be like, oh, well, my life sucks right now, but there's this magical unicorn person that's out there that's specifically for me. And then once I meet them, all my life problems are going to be solved. And I think a lot of times when people finally find a significant other that they're looking for, they think, oh, you know, I'm done. This is over. I found, I found the one for me. And then they start to let themselves go. Uh, not only girls do this, but guys do this as well. Um, especially if they've been together for a very long time, that's when it starts to happen. Look, if you genuinely don't care about how your girl looks and she starts to gain weight and you're happy with that, fine, that's cool with you. But for me, I take that as an insult, all right? Because love is sacrifice. And if you are not willing to continue to sacrifice by taking care of your health and, um, and looking good for your man, then I don't think you actually love me. You're just, you're just like, oh, well, I'm, you know, I don't have to work hard for my man anymore now that I've got him. But in order for me to have that position, it's only fair that, you know, the same thing is applied to her as well, or to myself, I should say. So if you expect to continually have your girl look good for you, you should expect that she would expect you to keep looking good for her, right? And for me as a fitness professional, as a personal trainer, 10 years now, I think just in general, everybody should always try to look their best um, because you're gonna feel better, look better. And look, do you want your significant other to just take a nosedive in attractiveness once you guys uh, are comfortable enough with each other? Probably not. It's important that you remain physically attracted to one another. A crazy thing to say nowadays, I know. It's like, why don't you love me for me? If you actually loved me for me, you wouldn't care about how I look. You only care about how my appearance. You don't actually care. You don't actually love me for me. It's like, no, man. The fact that you don't want to sacrifice for me anymore by putting in hours at the gym and eating healthy goes to show you that you're just, it almost feels like you're using me, right? Oh, because I have this person anymore, I don't have to do these tough things in order to keep up with my appearance anymore. That's really, that's really the heart of the issue, right? Maybe it's hard to put into words, but I think that's really what's going on there for the most part. So for me, I haven't had a, an exclusive relationship in like five years, and the last time I did, she was a personal trainer as well, so that was never an issue. But if I'm dating a girl exclusively and she like lets herself go, unacceptable. Similarly, if I start letting myself go and she has a problem with it, she would be in her right to leave my ass as well, so. Above and beyond to get attention, then you get Here's the issue, since you people wanna play that fucking game, I got some fucking women say you want a nice guy, right? Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Then you f the nice guy over for the guy that ain't dick, right? Now you don't left a nice guy broken and now he becomes a f boy because of you, right? But wait, hold on, hold on, I'm not done with you, I'm not done with you yet. You women think that bringing your pretty face, having a nice body and sex is the only thing you need to bring into the relationship. Two women lack to develop a personal skill, you lack to develop a f***ing personality, y'all lack anything that's gonna keep your man around. So when the man just ups and leaves, right? Then y'all be acting all sorts of surprise. Man, if you only Damn, this guy just perfectly described the toxic cycle that most uh, women and men get into, right? 
they, but here's, here, here's one part that I have a problem with there is this idea of like, oh, you're screwing over the nice guy. Like us nice guys need love too. It's like, yes, you need love too, but you're not entitled to it. You know what I mean? I don't like this whole entire like nice, you know, justice for the nice guys type mentality. Um, but all that being said, if you're a girl and you are attracted to the bad boy and not the nice guy, and you know the bad boy has a history of screwing girls over, if you get screwed over, you have no room to complain because you already knew what you were getting into. But, but this is also where most guys uh, screw up. They think that, oh, because the girls are attracted to the bad boys, that, that they prefer to date like dickhead guys, right? No, they are attracted to strength, okay? They are attracted to dominance and strength and somebody who can make them feel safe. Okay, so if you are on the good side of the bad boy, the, the, the traditional bad boy at the very least, he's not a pushover, right? He's kind of a dick, but at the very least he's assertive. He can hold his own. That's what they're attracted to. Ideally, if you have a man who has those things and also isn't a dick, the girl is almost always gonna choose that guy over the guy that is of equal strength, but is also a dick. You feel me? It's just that the nice guys are, don't have any of that in terms of providing protection, in terms of providing safety, in terms of um, being dominant. So if you are, if you had to choose between a weakling and a strong man who's kind of a dick, the girl is probably gonna choose this every time. But if you have a strong man who's kind of a dick and you have a strong man who isn't a dick, she's probably gonna choose this guy every time. You know what I mean? It's just that a lot of these guys don't exist. So, but that's one of the things that we try to uh, help you to become on this channel, especially with our white pill philosophy. I listen to one message today, listen to this one. I got this DM from a young man today. This is sadly a very common tactic that is often employed when a guy breaks up with a girl, she suddenly calls you and surprise, surprise, she's pregnant. What do you do when you get that call? Whatever you do, do not sleep with her because that's where she's actually going to try and get pregnant. Do not believe her based on a positive pregnancy test or an ultrasound. Both of those can be faked. Yes, positive pregnancy tests can very easily be purchased online. Ultrasound photos and videos can also be gotten online and easily manipulated with names. Go to a doctor's appointment with her and have it verified by the doctor. And until then, do not sleep with her. If she makes up a reason why she doesn't want you to go to the doctor's appointment, fine. Do not sleep with her. This is such a common tactic that my mom saw during her years of practice as a father's rights lawyer. It is embarrassing how much this happened. Damn, this is why you want to wrap your tool, fellas. Right, I know it feels a lot better to not wear protection, but uh, do you really want to deal with stuff like this? You know what I mean? Um, and I wouldn't be surprised, especially if like these really high status guys, like there was this thing in, uh, that happened with NBA players where they had to make like a public announcement for NBA players that like after you've done the deed to not throw the, the, the rubber into the trash can because the contents within the rubber can be uh, extracted <laughs> for certain uses uh, later on by the woman that you just had relations with. Instead, you want to flush it down the toilet. So um, that's definitely something to uh, be aware of. I've never had one of these uh, scares myself, but you definitely want to make sure that you are being cautious, obviously. Um, but damn, yo, that lady might might have saved a lot of guys a lot of heartache. Uh, so look, TikTok's not all trash. That was actually very good advice, I think. This is what it looks like when you are a good father, but you have a bitter baby mother. Today was my son's third birthday, and I spent tons of money on gifts and didn't even have the opportunity to get to see it. Literally was ignored, knocked on the door, everything. It's time. It's time to accept that fathers have rights especially when you have a father who wants to be active in his child's life, because I'm far from a deadbeat. Look, the statistics on this are very clear. The vast majority of crimes, uh, both petty and criminal, that are caused in the U.S. come from people who are from a single parent household. For the most part, single parent household where they're only raised by the mother, not by the father. And I think, um, you know, any psychologist, any reasonable person will agree it's ideal to have a dual parent household rather than a single parent household. But more specifically for men, men need a man a, or somebody with a very masculine presence at least to lead them through their teen years where their body is changing, their aggression is increasing. If you don't have a wiser older brother or uh, a father figure or a wise uncle to guide you through that, 
um, you're going to start seeking that elsewhere. Unfortunately, in the US, a lot of people seek that through joining gangs and things like that. Um, within this Manosphere space, at the very least, it's a bit less intense. It's still bad, but not as bad as joining a gang. But a lot of people will find, you know, some of these Manosphere channels because, you know, they're a lot of these teenage kids, um, they don't have anywhere else to turn. So they'll start the, the first person who's speaking some red pill truths to them they'll find through shows like Fresh and Fit, for example, and then they'll start to worship them instead, right? So it's not a coincidence that the vast majority, not the vast majority, but a very significant amount of the people that I talk to who are um, kind of uh, justice warriors for uh, FNF, more specifically, a lot of them come from single parent households and don't have a dad. Um, that's not a coincidence. So I think what, what, I, what I try to do with a lot of these videos here, although I can be very harsh and critical, um, especially toward guys, and uh, I hold them very much accountable and I don't hold back, um, is because that's the type of brotherly, fatherly love that you need that a lot of these dudes didn't have. What is motherly love? Motherly love is saying, hey, it's okay, don't worry, I love you no matter what, I love you the way that you are. A good father, a good older brother is going to, when you fuck up, he's, he's just gonna kick your ass, right? And because of that, you start to understand. You know what I mean? You, you start to understand how not to fuck up. That's kind of a more masculine way to improve. When I'm talking and making fun of these, you know, what I call IJWs on the internet, it's not just to make fun of them forever. I want them to change, but these guys have never received tough love in their entire lives, which is why they are how they are. You feel me? So, um, and we've, I've even had people convert on this channel, going from fanboy or somebody who's completely black-pilled to becoming more white-pilled, more reasonable, and somebody who doesn't make excuses. You know what I mean? Uh, because they have been seeking out an older brother, a father figure, in the wrong places through the, a lot of the channels that I go after here. Because these older brothers on the internet that these guys crave, they don't actually help them. They just constantly inject them with copium to make them feel better, which is much more of a feminine way of helping somebody out. A more masculine way of helping somebody out is calling you out on your shit, right? Actually telling you the harsh truth of the world, which is what it actually means to be red pill, To not let you make excuses. Instead, when you make excuses, you call them a bitch, and then you say, hey, what are you gonna do about it now? Yeah, you got screwed over. Quit bitching. It's fucking go do something. You know what I mean? So that's the role that I try to take with these guys, and um, I think it's actually been uh, very effective. Uh, I've had a bunch of different people who are plugged into these ideologies over time start to really like my content instead, and some of uh, some big supporters of this channel are former, you know, FNF fanboys. Uh, because they've kind of realized that actually having an older brother in myself and Coach Whitepill and some of the other you know, high quality dudes that I bring on here that give advice on this channel, um, they tell it like it is, right? They are, they're not going to give you that feminine love, feminine energy of, oh, it's okay, it's not your fault. It's like, no, a masculine way of loving somebody is to expect them to be their best, to tell them the harsh truth. That's what I do here. Okay, I think that's enough for this video. We've talked a while, we had some laughs along the way, and hopefully we had some learning moments along the way as well. So let me know if you like this type of content um, of me reacting to these types of TikToks. I actually used to do this a lot, uh, like six months ago. Um, I was doing more content like this. So uh, I'm thinking of making this a video series. So if you wanna watch the previous video of me reacting to TikTok content, you can watch it right here. Otherwise, let me know what you think in the comment section below, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.